we have Jim calling in. And Jim, you want to talk about Stefan Molyneux. Well, yeah, uh, you guys were talking about um, undercutting uh, workers and how that's bad and everything. Uh, now, I know Derek J posted a blog post and I was kind of or kind of listening to the audio in between the commercials. And I just want to make sure I got the gist of this right. Um, you're saying that because Stefan Molyneux made this error and he uh, he's he said some really silly things that we shouldn't discredit him as a philosopher. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I, I'm saying that he has made a mistake. Uh, he made a, a factual, like a philosophical error in, in speaking that he was wrong. I agreed with the, the hosts of Free Talk Live and their assessment that he was wrong about what he was saying, but that uh, he, he still produces incredible value, at least for me, uh, informationally and philosophically. Well, I know his older videos are really good, like um, the end of the Statism is Dead series, uh, there's a couple of good. There's a couple of good series on there. There's a good. There's a good collection of really great videos and his earlier stuff. But later, I haven't been seeing any of that. Um, there, the truth about um, Trayvon Martin was fairly decent, but then he just went right back into parental uh, or peaceful parenting, and he uses that almost like a bait and switch. So it's like, oh, I'm, come on in, we're going to talk about Tray, uh, Trayvon Martin. Oh, by the way, don't spank your kids. Which, right. Which I, I agree with, but it's it's like it's getting old after a while. And I was wondering uh, what philosophical concepts is he responsible for that you agree with still? Oh, uh, well, the end of statism. In my mind, you know, I've been following him since probably 2009, uh, 2010, and that was the beginning of my transition uh, to become an anarchist. So it was hearing these philosophical principles of self-ownership for the first time uh, explained in a way that I thought was eloquent um, that really had a lasting impact on me. Yeah, and he's and his older videos are great. Um, they were really pivotal, pivotal in my transition uh, to becoming an anarchist too. Yeah, I still so I'm subscribed to his channel and I watch those um, the videos that he puts out recently. And I agree with you, Jim, that it gets kind of annoying that his his um, ploy has been pretty much to say I'm gonna pitch people with clickbait talking about the most relevant news topic, and then I'm going to talk about peaceful parenting. And this was something I sort of got into yesterday with Ian when he was hosting Free Talk Live. Is like. He's got a different strategy for the way he wants to live his life and advance freedom. And it's different from what we have here at Free Talk Live where we're willing to live the ideas of liberty. He's not, you yeah, know, and not. so he has to sort of limit what he can say. And I think it makes him come off as a status sometimes. Yeah. And when he's saying things like you should always submit to the to the uh, government, you should always do this. You shouldn't. Uh, engage in self-defense. You should just try to avoid it and uh, try to get other people to be m more peaceful. Yeah, um, it, it's, it's just it's I mean, troubling to hear those things. Yeah, for me as well. I'm sure it's troubling for you. I mean, yeah, I mean, like the the guy's pretty well off. I mean, his wife makes a good penny. I mean, he's sitting on what, like two hundred thousand dollars in Bitcoin. Yeah, but he's probably and, terrified of the state, man. It, <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I mean, what the, you don't you, think he is? Oh, I'm I'm pretty sure he, he probably has some fear, but I mean, he lives pretty much a sheltered life when it comes to uh, uh, private crime. Uh, <laughs> he, I think I mean, he expects that any day someone's going to knock on his door and say, "You're going to federal prison for the rest of your life." For what? I don't know. It could, yeah, be, for, it could be for sedition. It could be for anything. I mean, for someone speaking out against the state, they'll find anything. It could be, you know, he didn't pay his taxes in 2001 or something. It, it could be anything. That's that's possible, but um, the but I'm talking about uh, private crime, uh, not not a government crime. Oh. Um, was, I mean, like if if you're in a lower income area, you're going to be more subject to things like, you know, robberies, carjackings, home invasions, that sort of thing, than you are if you're in a gated community somewhere in you know affluent uh, Ottawa, Canada. I follow. What, what does that have to do with Stefan? Uh, well, he he preaches that no one should practice self-defense no one should uh get training in martial arts no one should have a gun not that you should, yeah, that isn't should be that banned. ridiculous not that they should be banned but that you shouldn't do it at all and it, the only the best way to deal with it is just to submit to your pressures whether they're government or private and uh move, get along with your day and i could not possibly disagree more why um, because self-defense is important if people are an arm an armed society is a polite society if people are armed people are not going to be uh, willing to um, 
go after just the random Joe on the street. They're probably not going to bust into people's houses because they don't know who's armed. But if no one is, then you're just increasing the uh, you're uh, you're decreasing the risk and increasing the chances of uh, further crime, not just for you, but for other people around you. It has a uh, has a, um, a negative externality. I agree with you, Jim, and I bet that Stefan would secretly agree with you. I'm speculating, obviously, but I think that he's t- he's put himself into a, a corner where mm-hmm. his, his fame has gotten to a point where he's got so many followers, he wants to keep them. He'll turn people off if he's completely philosophically consistent, so he just drums on about peaceful parenting and then stays a statist about the rest of the stuff. What do you think about my theory? Uh, that sounds about right, but I think in the end, this particular comment when he's talking about the Eric, Eric Gardner, Lucy Sigrid thing, yeah. I think that's more of a way to be consistent with his defense against uh, his DMCA uh, abuse with uh, True Sheeps. Okay, and just to think catch listeners up to speed, we have to we have to give some background here that Stefan uh, produces videos. He recently said that Eric Gardner, the man who was choked to death by the NYPD, caused a victim by selling his loose cigarettes. Interesting. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more, as well as the uh, copyright claim mm-hmm. that he filed when we come back on mm-hmm. Free Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. In studio tonight, it's Daryl. Derek J. And Danica. And back to the Skype where Jim is on the line. Jim and Derek have been explaining a good bit about Stefan Molyneux to me. Uh, I... I'm not someone who listens to Stefan Molyneux's three-hour-long podcast that he puts out. And apparently he said some things about Eric Garner recently. Yeah. So tell us what he said about Eric Garner. Well, it was my understanding, and uh, just to reiterate, that I believe he misspoke or was factually just incorrect when he said that uh, Eric Garner, the man who was choked to death by the NYPD for selling loose cigarettes, caused a victim by his selling of loose cigarettes. And and the victim, uh, Stefan claimed, were all the people who'd pay the taxes um, for cigarettes. Is that a, am I correct in that recap, Jim? That sounds yeah, that sounds about right. He was creating victims. Yeah. And not just I, and not just be. creating any victims, not just a, because I was saying on Free Talk Live, you know, I think he misspoke and should have said that the it was a property rights issue. It's not a tax issue. It's like, hey, you're on my property. You're selling stuff. I want you gone. You're basically Jay and Silent Bob. And this guy has been arrested for selling cigarettes in front of businesses apparently dozens of times. So it seems like he's a nuisance. Just get rid of him. Yeah, but he I, isn't. He, isn't he on the uh, government sidewalks? Isn't he uh, just as just as entitled to walk around on those streets as anybody else? Uh, I guess. I would argue that in a free society, the business owner would own the property mm-hmm. in front of his business. So you know, I don't see that as a legitimate argument in in, in my world. Right, but we we live in this world, and that's not the case. What the case is now is that he was standing on public property. "Quote yeah. unquote government yeah. property." Actually, but I don't. And, yeah, uh, I don't buy that. There's such a thing as public property. It's government property. Right. Exactly. But in this paradigm, you know, they have every "quote unquote" right to it that we do. It's just sickening to talk like that. But that's why it's um, so messy. It's so hard to speculate about this because we've all got like this different version of the world. Like, okay, the property owners and uh, the police. Everyone's operating under a different set of principles here. So yeah, but to, in a free society, we wouldn't be pay, those store owners wouldn't be paying taxes, so here, here. we wouldn't have this problem. So yeah. to claim that you know he victimized someone because he was not paying a certain tax, it sounds very similar to that Supreme Court ruling that if you grow your own grain, you are interfering with interstate commerce. Because you're yeah. not buying grain yeah. that was grown in you know some flyover state. Yeah, it's insane. So why should we care, Jim? 
Well, because this is all kind of linked into what his defense of uh, the True Shibes thing. Uh, True Shibes was a YouTuber who was taking, I guess, Lucy's of his, his uh, three hour long videos, cutting out the parts that are really just outrageous or just wacky and posting them up. And it was in a BuzzFeed article that was getting a lot of attention. And apparently he got upset about it and filed some uh, false Digital Millennium Copyright Act claims against him, which is using the state guns to stop them from using his quote-unquote intellectual property that he doesn't believe in. Yeah, that's um, despicable. That that was his first reaction. I mean, where where does that come from? Uh, was he uh, perhaps, uh, I don't know, abused as a child? Well, <laughs> we, <laughs> Apparently. That's not where I was going. But I was thinking, you know, was he a hardcore statist when he worked in the world of technology before he became an anarchist or uh, like a philosophical anarchist? Because maybe it was just his trigger reaction to be like, oh, no, I'm being attacked. I have to use the state in the only way I know how. Well, from what I understand, when he first started his uh, videos, he was dr commuting to and from his uh, software jobs in his car talking about anarchy. So uh, probably not. OK. Um, but he so is why using, should we care? Maybe because he's he's uh, he's not very philosophically consistent. This is an ethicist who say who says that anybody who does any ethicist, excuse me, that doesn't follow their own ethics, you don't need any other arguments to discredit his ethics. Yeah, and it's it's against UPB to use the state to silence criticism, and therefore we that's all we need according to Stefan Molyneux. Hold on, to what, what's UBP? Okay, U UPP, there's so many cult jargons. The UPB is a universally preferable behavior, which is his grand unified ethical theory that's supposed to prove objective morality, secular uh, objective morality. And it's just basically a rehashing of Kant's um, uh, argument from detontology or whatever, uh, basically saying that, uh, you know, if it's, if you can't, if everybody can't do it at the same time, or if two people can't do it in the same room, then, you know, then it's uh, ethically uh, bad, or if it doesn't follow the NAP, then it's bad, mm -hmm. um, and it's objectively true. And there's some other problems with it, but he also has wrote this long uh, ethical article that says that any uh, ethicist that violates his own ethics, um, you can just disregard his ethics outright. And that was his defense against making the videos about Marx, um, Nelson Mandela, and stuff like that. You know, while it's true these guys were hypocrites, um, that doesn't really negate the the arguments that he's making. But according to him, that's not an uh, ad hominem. I mean, there's other reasons for attacking those things. So, there's are you really calling in to call those. Molyneux a hypocrite? Um, is that your point? No. Well, the the main point is I just wanted to kind of clarify what you were saying uh, yesterday. And I really wanted to know uh, what he – because you said that he was a good philosopher. But I want to know, like, what good philosophy has he c come up with himself? Because the only thing that I've hear heard so far was either stuff that it's been – good stuff, but that's been rehashed and rebranded to make it seem like it's coming from him. Yeah. Or really bad stuff that uh, that he is solely uh, responsible for that um, – yeah, well, like, what's he done so for me lately is, is a good question to ask. Yeah. You know, he's an entertainer for me. Like, I'm still subscribed to his channel because I enjoy hearing uh, random people call in from around the world and then uh, talk about the problems that they have in their lives with relationships and how that relates to their upbringing. I find that sort of thing valuable because I can reflect on my own life and, and glean a little bit from it. You know, I can't say specifically uh, what philosophical enlightening things, you know, he's he's changed in my world forever. Not at the drop of the hat. But I think it's the exercise in thinking critically, in a analyzing a situation and starting from first principles. You know, just getting exercise in that. Just hearing those conversations is beneficial to me. Okay, so I'm confused about something. Is he trying to be a philosopher or a therapist? Well, it's interesting. He, he sort of <laughs> blends the two. Yeah, he said that his big influence is uh, uh, he'll, he'll name off philosophers, but he also names off uh, Dr. Phil. And he says he's a huge fan of Dr. Phil. Oh, and boy. I'm just like, oh, man, really? And it's but there would be people who will call into a show and say, like, oh, I want to talk about free market algorithm. And then it just goes straight into, oh, did you know? Did your parents abuse you? Did they spank you? How many times did they spank you? How often did they spank you? Did they spank you regularly? How old until you – and it just keeps going droning on and on and on and on. It's like what does this have to do with agorism? 
Well, not everyone's trying to, you know, just reach a stateless society. Some people just want to work out the problems in their lives, and it's beneficial to look to their history to, right, to work but I've, those out. I've heard him. I mean, I've heard him debate zeitgeisters, and the zeitgeist stuff is so easily, you know, refuted. And he understands the economics behind it, and it's just really low hanging fruit to, you know, like go, oh, we're not going to talk about the economic calculation problem and show why zeitgeist is wrong. You know, like tell me about your parents. You know, like did did they take you to daycare did they abandon you there and you know this is you know did they go to work is that why you're you want this you know socialist utopia uh yeah. to take care of you like a parent and it's like really that's what we're going with that's how we're going to refute these ideas so for people that aren't familiar with what the zeitgeist oh. thing is uh it's sort of this idea of what i called communism with a computer <laughs> uh they call it the venus project uh, the resource-based economy to where at some point we'll wind up to where computers can take care of all of our needs and nobody will have to work and things just magically wind up getting done and you know you get whatever you need from a computer but somehow there's not going to be rationing of supplies and food it really doesn't make a lot of logical sense it sounds good as a fairy tale jim thanks for the call this is free talk live 